Hey there, beloved Ascension Pioneers. Today I want to read you a list, top 10 things that people usually say. This is a list I wrote a while ago and um, I just recently started automatically writing again. Feels good because I kind of, you know, dropped this activity for a while. Now I'm back <laughs> full speed ahead. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to read this to all of you. Um, it is kind of a list that, you know, it has some funny, maybe sarcastic views for some, if you look at it from that approach. Maybe for some, it, some things are serious, you know. So you figure out what I mean while I read this and when I explain some deeper things about us. Because as you know, all truth is multi-layer, multifaceted as we are. And the same way you have your human truth there's also a multidimensional truth, and then there's a quantum, like hyperspace truth, so to say. This is where true oneness resides. So this is a list that I wrote, and this is kind of like, you can consider this also top 10 things the New Ager sometimes say, and with my own personal explanations of the deeper meaning behind things as such. Okay, here I go. First saying is, we're all one. <laughs> yeah, this is an oldie goldie. So there's a difference, um, actually, of truly feeling oneness and just saying, you know, just saying, oh, we're all one, we're all the same. And um, because some people use this sometimes as an excuse not to know their own self, as an individualized part of the source. So to know yourself with a, you know, capital S and your own path. I wrote a while ago on my Ascension page, Ascension Pioneers page, I said, well, we're all individualized, we're unique. And someone replied to me, no, we're not. We're all the same. We're on the same path. And I said, well, not exactly. If you look at it from another perspective, you know, because truth is multi-layered and you cannot just say this is how it is, period. You know, oops, I think I've already said one of my quotes uh oh, in advance. Anyway, um, there's a really a huge difference between... Uh, how do I say this? When we, when one experiences oneness truly and when one says we are one, because there's so many people who say we're one and they still don't, you know, really feel this oneness. For instance, I, I was talking to this, with a friend talking about this and um, he said, once you really experience oneness, you don't want to eat animals anymore because you feel so at one with them and you, sh you cherish their own experience as well. So this is where the difference is, but just saying that we're one and feeling oneness, okay? Okay, so this was number one. Number two is, all is love and light. <laughs> well, yeah, so the difference here is uh, in really embodying that, you know, all is love and light and taking responsibility for one's own actions, you know, being a responsible co-creator human being, or to just live in ignorance and illusion. And, you know, for the things you do, don't take any responsibility. And whenever you're just guided or, you know, challenged by someone or something in your life, you just say, oh, all is light and love anyway. There's a huge difference between that. And that's another multi-layered, multifaceted truth here. Number three is like attracts like. <laughs> so, Again, there's a difference between the true law of attraction and there's a difference between the law of attraction and the law of resonance. So law, law, uh, law of resonance is like, you know, like vibrates with like. And law of, of attraction is more like you become, you know, you attract what you focus on. This is another thing, another facet. So there's a difference between this true law of attraction and deeper understanding of spiritual laws versus false. You know what I put quote unquote because nothing is false anyway if you look at it from a deeper pers perspective. So there's a difference. So false teachings, new age, superficial sayings. And uh, one of my friends made a video once about that, how people were accusing her of, you know, you attract this in your own life anyway because you're thinking about it because you're manifesting it that way. It's not when you understand this from a deeper perspective, you see that it's not just about that. Okay. Um, number four, he or she said, you know, they say like this, this teacher says like that, this master says like that, you know, this is how it is. So here it is actually more about the energy behind the words, as I always say, right? And it's never about the, um, what does it say? It's never inner wisdom when we listen to others over ourselves. 
So especially when there are certain channeled entities and things like that, um, I also have my own experience with that. When some person accused me of not being in oneness if I don't believe in a certain channeled entity through their messages. And I said, well, I don't think oneness comes from me believing that there's a certain entity saying these words through this channel. I just say, this doesn't make me one, my own inner feeling of oneness and knowing and being it is what it is. So it's more about us listening to our inner guide, our inner teacher, and just knowing that we might resonate with others on our path, but it's never about what others say. It is more about also the message than the messenger. And sometimes people say, how can you listen to that? It came from this person. Well, you know what, even that person, even if, you know, that's why I say false teachings, because nothing is false. Everything has, you know, value in it, whatever, who said it, whatever it's being said. But you have to understand also that sometimes new age, this is controlled by the people who are behind the mass manipulation. And that's why there, there are certain truths there in this movement, in these sayings, and you know, things like that. But there's also a lot of manipulation in it. So once you take a bit, you know, out of this truth of the whole, it's not truth anymore. You know, the grander, deeper truth of this reality of other realities, of the nature of spirit, things like that. Because of course, everyone has their own inner truth as to how we live our lives, how we interact. But there's also the truth behind the reality of this universe, of other multiverses, of creator beings, of souls, how we are creating worlds, things like that. And this is what I say, this is source truth. So number five is he or she is a spiritual teacher. It's all good with that, you know. Um, of course, I prefer the word uh, way shower because this is more, even that is a tag if you so want to call it, but I prefer it because you know, in deeper truth, no one can ever teach something to another. We're all always in the role of the teacher and the student at the same time. And uh, we can only become truth and embody it to ourselves, like Jesus said. So through that, when we embody it, we become way showers and we actually guide others. And um, we are all always in both roles, in source truth. You know, everything is always coming from the same point teacher, student, all the same. And this is called, you know, this is what I call being humble and teachable through your inner, through listening to others, not associating with all what they say, but listen, you know, listen to all, consciously observe all. Okay, number six is I'm spiritual. <laughs> We're all spiritual beings, you know, um, having a physical experience, experiencing this earthly realm. But the difference is whether we follow our spiritual path or not. This is the difference. So you can, you know, say, I'm following a spiritual path. I'm now in this timeline. It's about timelines, whatever you choose through your will. So there's no tags or labels needed here, right? Okay, number seven is I'm an indigo crystal starseed light worker. <laughs> this is so funny to me. It's all good with that and these labels, but an actual source truth truth knows its source so there's no labels needed here whenever you say i'm this you know someone asked me through a message one day uh, recently said how do you know your star seed i did not reply to that because firstly i have nothing to you know share to give guidance like that and this is not important for me anyway and i would just invite everyone who's asking themselves these questions to just focus on their path focus on their own inner individualized being because whenever you say i'm an indigo and then you associate with certain qualities that are being you know portrayed about this certain type of energy you limit yourself and we're limitless we're pure spirits so whenever you do that you kind of put a, yourself in a box you restrict yourself from experiencing so much more than just that label that is being given to you by another by yourself by teachings it doesn't matter it's the same way because when you accept something even it comes from the outer it comes from within you because you accept it as your truth so um, there's also here an issue of issue <laughs> of past lives, you know, past, because some people are still so confused about this, you know, um, for instance, they say I was this and that in past life and they become so attached to this, you know, they just associate with, you know, with this certain role or being, you know, um, I don't know, whatever they were, they think that they were sometimes even, you know, the truth is from another point of view. We are multidimensional and multidimensional, and this earthly reality is the 
one of the densest reality one can experience. And my friend said, well, this is actually the past. We are reliving the past. We are, you know, following and re repeating and um, changing some things in the past. So um, we're actually here to live our purpose here and now. Uh, because there's a difference to um, obsess over the past or to just, you know, show an interest and in your energy, you know, uh, and your, I don't know what to say, to feel an interest in certain incarnation or to just obsess over it. There's a huge difference, you know. So when we are interested in incarnation, we are interested in feeling a certain multidimensional aspect of ourselves. I'll read this to you, okay? I wrote something. Um, so it's truth, you know, um, it's, it's truth and we are, as human beings, we're manipulated to think in terms of duality, labelings, thinking we're different, better, worse, higher, lower, and many seek this validation to be a certain entity to feel they have value or are special. In truth, we were, as a human race, all created for the same, from the same, you know, source DNA. We all have the DNA of the source. So we all have cosmic DNA from star ancestors, and this is our universal, universal heritage. When, of course, our souls carry different awareness and hold different consciousness. And to know our soul ray, you know, this is something different. It's different to know your soul ray or to obsess over past lives. It is important only to know our self, to understand our variation of creation, who we are as a being, as an I am. But this can only be spiritually achieved when merging with your I am presence. And this is the path of ascension that so many talk about. Okay, number eight. It doesn't matter what we eat, some people say. We're pure vibration energy. It's all about our mind, you know. <laughs> it doesn't matter what we eat or do. This is so not true, you know, because... All is the same. All consciousness levels are intertwined and always one. So all the levels of our being, all creation, are important. And we need to grow on all levels to evolve because all are intertwined. Number nine. <laughs> this is a nice example. It's an example about a certain group of uh, spirit awareness. But it can be also about other things. Animals are a lower state of being. So... They were designed to be consumed by humans. Well, from a certain point of truth, deeper truth, um, this is also not true because there are many levels of understanding, you know, so this is called our awareness. But there's only one source truth, you know, as to how we as beings were created and how animals, why animals were created, why plants were created. Um, as, you know, we were created as light beings of love. And one needs to understand the laws of universal creation to understand this deeper meaning of that. It needs evolution of consciousness, progressing from the individual truth to source truth to understand. So animals are not lower or non-sentient beings, like some say. They are just a different variation of creation, and they serve their own purpose. It's not just to be consumed by humans. I mean, this is, this is very, very egocentric, so to say. And they do not come here to sacrifice themselves for us. It's truly, it's not just about us. <laughs> you know, we are not the only important um, consciousness in the universes. In source truth, there is no sacrifice as such because all creation is holy and sacred and not all revolves around human beings. You know, we're not the only species in the universe. So in no way we are more superior or advanced. We're just serving a different purpose of creation. This is example given <laughs> that I'll say all animals coming to earth, as to some say, no, they will be sl slaughtered for consumption. This is what I heard once. This statement shows for me, from my state of awareness, pure ignorance of the higher truth and higher awareness and all creation, understanding all creation. And it shows also not understanding of the manipulation towards, you know, cruelty and um, everything that all the levels that have been manipulated here on earth so the final is the final statement which i also gave away in my first one is this is how it is period you know i know <laughs> well well this is great well it is great to listen only to your own inner truth 
It is not respect and deeper spiritual understanding when we do not allow someone to think or act differently. So as I usually say, it's not just about love, it's also about respect. Everyone needs to go through their own lessons and experiences. So no one knows for another because there is multitude of awareness and the same amount of correspondent inner truths. There is just a different, there is just one source truth though. But it takes an evolved being merged with their I am presence to get to reach that state of the law of one, so to say, the love of one, where all variation of creation and all truths meet in one. So this is what I also wrote at the end, which is, I think, important as well. So read this too. No one can teach anyone anything. We can only show them, anyone that comes across our path, how to think on their own. Freeing our consciousness from all the outer, which is the external, the manipulated, the enforced, the predominant, dogmatic, indoctrinated, false, <laughs> and with any sort of agenda. It is up to everyone to fill their minds on their own, for everyone learns, grows, and evolves on their own. Remember, you're a beautiful, pure, unique manifestation of the living life force of Source in all things. And all consciousness. Until next time, <laughs> until next reading, next video, next nature escapade, I'm sending much love and have a beautiful weekend wherever you are. Take care, my beloved people. Bye-bye.